Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. We're about to embark on another reviewing your music. We're live on Twitch. I take your musical submissions. We listen to them. We go through them. We try to give some constructive criticism in the process too. Everything we listen to in this video is linked down below so you can check it out for yourself. Let's go. Let's listen to some of this uh, uh, viewer submitted music. The first listen of this session is from, uh, as I was saying, username Brax Drums. Artist is Soul Carnival. Title is Jukebox. Sorry, Juicebox. I cannot read. I apologize. Fail on my part. <laughs> and the genre is said to be hip hop slash rock slash jazz. Just a, just a really a multi-genre monster here. All right, um, let's give the track a listen. Let's give the track a shot and see what it's uh, got to offer. Ba bam. Hi, this is for all you internet gangsters out here who talk tough on Twitter, but ain't pulled up on nothing that day in your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talking to you. Hey, that was cool. That was cool. I mean, it's obviously rough around the edges in a lot of respects, but that, that was one of my favorite tracks of the night. Um, I thought it was a really well-written song. I thought the hook was fantastic. And um, look, as, as a band, you guys are tight as fuck. You guys are fucking tight. Tight as fuck. Toit like a toyga. Like very fucking tight. Tight as fuck band, I'll say here. So hell yes to being a fucking tight band. You know, look, as, as far as recommendations and stuff that I think maybe needs a little work, the sung vocal in the second half that you guys added there, um, I like it, but I think it could use another take. It's a little weak. It's it's a little off. I think that sung vocal could, you know, use another bit, use another something. Um, you know, uh, beyond that, there's the mix, which I think is a little messy. Um, while I like the drummer, your drummer's obviously a fucking beast. Um, the, the drums are so goddamn oppressive. The snare is just killing me. The snare is fucking killing me. Um, I'm, I'm not recommending tell the drummer to play less. I'm not saying oppress the drummer. <laughs> I'm saying just find a little bit more balance. Uh, you know, another kind of key example of that is the bass. The bass is good, but the bass is muddy. It's a muddy freaking bass. It's a muddy bass. Um, and beyond that, I, again, like the chord changes you guys are using, the groove that you got going, the bass line, the drum fills, it's all good. I think you could use something else in terms of just like sonic palette and everything, you know, not only is the mix a little muddy, but the, the song overall is as quality as a song as it is. I think the rapping and the vocals have a lot of personality and have a lot of character, um, you know, I, I think there's some, there, there, there should be something else there, be it a horn or some keys, keys, fucking keys. I don't know what the I don't know what the makeup of the band is. And I'm not, you know, trying to force you guys to add another member. I mean, I, I think uh, you could throw some pretty basic progressions over this just to add a little extra something. And it may do wonders. Um, and it may also, you know, make it a little easier to create almost like swells and transitional moments without having to just go to the drummer and be like, okay, do, do an amazing fill <laughs> to move us from this point to the other point. Because, you know, I, I think uh, other members of the band could kind of be taking on that task to come up with a creative transition to bring us from one moment to the next. Sometimes it can be the drum. Sometimes it could be other things. Um, but, uh, but yeah, drummer's a beast, obviously. 
uh, again, I think it's a really well written, well put together song. The recording and everything here is just a little raw. It's the mix is a little messy, and I think it could use another layer or two, be it some background vocalist keys, a horn, something like that. Um, but still, I, th- I think the the goodness of this track, the tightness of you guys as a band, and the lyricism as well as the uh, you know vocal personality and talent that's being brought to the table still shine through pretty clearly. You know, it's it's just not. Um, as, as I guess, a, a cleanly put together as, you know, it, it, it could be. Um, and also, you know, I, I, I'll say if, if, you know, you do put that effort into it to kind of, you know, really kind of, a, I guess, groom the track out into something that's a, even more well assembled, um, you know, you guys have to sort of get a little bit more ambitious with conceptualizing the, the cover art here as well. Um, you know, this could be sort of like a rough drawing for something that, maybe you hand over to a graphic designer or an illustrator or something like that. You know, I think the concept is cool, but you know, just like the very, um, uh, you know, gray looks like a phone picture of a drawing is, you know, just, it just doesn't really pop. You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, but Hey, you know, I, I think, uh, uh, you guys are working with something you're cooking with gas, you know, you just need to make sure that there's some, some really good Supreme shit on the barbecue when people are coming through to check it out. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, again, as I said, this is one of my favorite listens of the night. Um, I just think it's a little rough around the edges and needs some, some hammering out, needs some extra love. And, um, so yeah, my recommendation is to totally fucking keep it this please. All right. Soul Carnival. All right, so we have a username CF Staten here. Artist is uh, Dana CF. Uh, title is Deft Gloop. Genre is Breakcore, Internet Core, IDK. Okay, well, that uh, that excites me the most. Um, breakcore, Internet Core. I don't know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that means we're on the verge of something totally new here. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but let's uh, uh, give it a listen. And I, I like that this comes from, what, the project Apologists for the Unconvinced Machine. I, I like that. I like that. I respect that. <laughs> I respect that. All right, let's, uh, let's give it a spin. getting a little nostalgic on that not only because I, I used to listen to a lot more jungle and sort of drum and bass and breakbeat stuff like back in college but uh that almost had like a i don't know there was, was almost like a video game soundtrack quality to it like an old school video game soundtrack quality to it i'll, I'll say there was almost like a vaporwave vibe to some of the synthesizers as well that uh that i liked on this too um the breakbeats for the most part were fine I just think the mix came off a little dry. It was a little dry. I think you'd use a, a, just a little bit of, just a splash of a reverb, a delay, a something, not just on those synthesizers, but maybe on some of the percussion as well, just to kind of uh, give it a little bit more depth, give it a little bit more flavor. Um, I think that you could be throwing in maybe more rhythmic variations on this beat as well, but maybe my biggest recommendation here, and maybe this is because I'm a little stickler on this as somebody who's, you know, a a bassist myself, but the bass line is kind of stiff. It's a little awkward and look, I get it. Um, as a bass player, I know it can be very difficult to get a good groove out of either, you know, a good grooving bass line out of a, uh, a DAW or a synth bass. Uh, you know, th- there are very few bass players who I know who can like, you know, rock a bass guitar and rock a bass synths or, you know, rock a synthesizer with, you know, uh, a bass line and have it sound just as good. Um, so that can be difficult. Um, but I mean, I would continue working at the bass line, continue sculpting that bass line. As I was sort of saying earlier, uh, groove is really like a sculpture. And, um, you know, I think as far as the breakbeat goes, that part of your sculpture is there. And the bass line, you want that bass line to be reinforcing 
That's that groove of, you know, the drums that you're throwing together there, uh, especially on a piece in a genre such as this, where the break beats are really carrying the whole thing. You know what I mean? So in that moment, the bass really needs to kind of be as supportive as it can be. And, um, you know, again, I, I just felt like the bass line came off a little too awkward to um, be backing up the uh, breakbeat groove as as well as it could be. Um, outside of that, you know, I, I thought that the little vocal bits you added, as well as uh, those kinds of uh, washy, almost like vapor-esque synthesizers you were throwing in there, uh, they were fine. But, you know, I, I think... Uh, they weren't everything that really could have been kind of taking up the higher frequencies of the track. I think you could throw more onto this thing, throw another layer, throw a lead. You know, I think you'd use a stronger bass line, And I think there are at least some sections of the track it doesn't need to be over the whole song, but I think there are some, some, some sections of the track that could use a lead, you know, a strong lead or something, you know? Um, but as far as like a lot of the foundational elements here, there's a lot of good stuff going on here, you know? But uh, maybe a stronger bass line, maybe a stronger lead, a few splashes of reverb and delay to add some color, a few beat variations here and there uh, to kind of, you know, create a, a little break in the midst of the song that just lasts maybe a bar and just kind of brings us back into the beat, something like that, just to change things up. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much of this stuff that you're listening to, but obviously get into Aphex Twin, obviously get into Venetian Snares, obviously get into Square Pusher. There's a million different artists that you could be listening to for this kind of thing. But, you know, look at some of the... It, 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 whoops. You know, when it comes to break core and drum and bass and that sort of thing, you know, those finer little rhythmic details are everything. And the more the, of that you can add in creatively to just season the song and give it more detail, give it, you know, more something, I, in most cases, the better. I mean, you could get so crazy with those details and variations that, again, you get to like a Venetian snares level and it's just like this endlessly changing jumble and <laughs> it's completely disorienting. You don't need to go that far. Uh, <laughs> I think there's a, a pretty wide gap between where you are now and going all the way over there, you know? But uh, I, I think there's definitely more layers, more details that you could be throwing into this. But again, foundational element wise, you've got a lot of good stuff going on here. Um, and again, thank you very much for uh, submitting and coming through. It's Ryan Fitzgerald has submitted a song under the artist name Chronic Nostalgics. The title is Nevermore. The genre is pop punk. Uh, let's give the song a spin and see what it's got going. Whew. Okay. Well, that was that. Um, you know, I think the tune and you've got a very tried and true chord progression there, that descending chord progression on the hook. I mean, that's been on pop songs since time in memoriam, but you know, you're doing your own thing with it. And again, tune wise, I, I think the song is solid. I think, uh, you know, you've got a good build here. Song structure wise. I think the sound of the track really needs to get hammered out. The kick is a little thuddy, in my opinion, not in the uh, uh, the best way. I think the kick could be a little bit tighter. Um, was there bass? I heard no bass. I heard zero bass. I heard zero bass. And and there may have in fact been no bass on the track, <laughs> you know. But if if there wasn't, then there there's got to be bass at some point. There's got to be some bass. We got to get some bass in the mix there. Uh, if, if if you're really going to like kind of uh, complete complete this song bass oppression it felt like bass oppression to me it did feel like bass oppression um <laughs> there were a few other spots on the track that grabbed my ear like that moment in the first leg where you kind of transitioned into the chorus and you had that drum do that little fill and you had the guitar still driving over it i would say just give the drum that space that way, when the chorus bursts in, the guitar comes back 
and it feels like a larger splash. Um, I think the fact that you're working with so few elements here is kind of causing you to make some compositional faux pas here that, you know, maybe just give that section to the drum and presumably the bass. And then again, when the guitar comes back in with those roaring chords, it'll feel like a big explosion. What you did there with the harmonized vocal, uh, not the harmonized vocal, what you did there with the harmonized guitar leads was really cool. That was nice. I mean, you know, it wasn't like the tightest harmonized solo I've ever heard in my life, but it shows you're trying. You've got good ideas going on. You don't want the song to sound the same and sound uniform from front to back. So you're adding a little here. You're adding a little there. Um, again, I would continue. Uh, it's a solid song. It's a solidly assembled track. I would continue from here. If you're going to continue working on this track or others that sound like it, work on. And look, it's pop punk. There's not too many more layers you can add, but, you know, um, work out different rhythm guitar parts, work out different vocal background vocal parts and work out a bass part, a sweet ass bass part uh, for this thing as well. Um, yeah, I thought it was a, a solid track, a solid tune. It's just got a rough mix, a little rough around the edges. Um, you know, it could use some more low end. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you for submitting and coming through. Subi Watson, thank you very much for the sub. Appreciate it. All right, let me, um, and yes, good job. Obviously good job. All right, uh, No Cap Ginger is the username. The artist is Plain Sour. I think I got that right. Uh, title is Computer Amnesia. The genre is Industrial Electronic. Uh, let's see uh, what it sounds like. Ba bam was interesting I think certainly the most uh strange and challenging track of the night I don't know about you guys but at least for the first leg I could totally imagine like Tom York in my head just crying over this you know, you know presuming it's like a weird solo thing not like on a radio head track you know but uh just just imagine like a weird Tom York solo side thing and you know just kind of crooning over it a little bit I, I could totally imagine Tom on there um you know look I think your use of sound was really cool um the rhythms and grooves that you were throwing in with these really spacey beats were interesting as well I guess like the biggest recommendation or issue that I have with the track is really the progression of it which obviously I could tell you're going for something experimental um, as some of the transitions seem purposefully jarring. Um, but, you know, that, that still remains that some of the progressions and rhythms that you were presenting sort of trailed off. You know what I mean? It's like they kind of went for a little while and then it just almost seemed like it didn't so much complete as much as it just sort of faded away without really any warning or reason. And then it just... Uh, again, kind of disappeared without a trace. And uh, then all of a sudden, like, as I'm kind of wondering in my head, like, well, where did that go? You know, where, where, where did that thing go off to? Then all of a sudden something else starts happening. It's like, oh, okay. Um, you know, that to me is what feels almost like a little random and ungratifying about it. Uh, but by contrast, that final uh, little transition that you go into, what is it? When, when does it start? <laughs> This one, when does this start? That part was really cool. I liked that. That was jarring in a cool way because it felt like you purposefully kind of put us into a little bit of a lull there. You know, you kind of pulled us into this false sense of serenity in a way it was haunting but still like kind of a serenity and then bam i'm gonna hit you with that haunting wall of sci-fi <laughs> experimental break 
whatever madness that you've got going on here. Um, you know, it, it feels like a lot of interesting stuff coming together. There are elements of it that feel like it's linked to ambient music. It's linked to uh, IDM as well. Uh, and, you know, obviously the industrial thing too. Uh, it, it's, it's a bit witchy too. There's something like truly haunting and strange about it as well. Um, I kind of am going to save this for <laughs> later and see if there's anything else interesting going on here. Um, again, I had a few issues with some of the transitions structurally being a little jarring or questionable as I felt like they almost like built up anticipation or momentum that just sort of disappeared and trailed off. And then we just suddenly went into something else. But, um, you know, outside of that, uh, grooves, synths, sound play, sound craft, were all really cool. And um, thank you for uh, coming through and, uh, and sharing this and uh, submitting. All right, this next one and final one for this video comes from L.A. Soccer. The artist name is The Boulevards, title is Sidelines, and the genre it's labeled under is Indie. Let's give it a try and see what it's got. Ba-bam! Okay, there we go. Sidelines. Thank you for submitting. All right, um, you know, thoughts on this one. Well, before I get into my thoughts, I will say, and this is, you know, not a jab against anybody, and obviously everyone here in terms of submitting, and McFarlane, you're all doing a great job. But I did see, I did notice here the song is two years old. And I wouldn't necessarily say this is like a deal breaker. You know, I do say submit the most recent work possible. But if you're constantly writing, recording and creating and, you know, you have the chance to submit a track here and it's the song that you're most excited about, you think it's the track that has the most potential. If you think your track that has the most potential, the track that you want to show out is two years old, dude, you should have you should have outwritten this song more than a year ago. You, you should have better songs than this. And I'm not saying that, you know, to knock the song. The song, the song itself is fine, but I, I would at least hope, I don't know what you've been doing in the past two years, but I would at, at least hope you've outdone this track in some way, shape, or form since then. It's been two years. You should have outwritten this track. You should have outdone this track. You should be past to this point. In two years, you should have had, you, in two years, you should already have a better written, better mixed track. So I, I, I guess that that's my first point. That's my first point. Um, and, I, you know, obviously I can't play a million songs and everything. And, and maybe there was a certain reason behind giving me this particular song. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll say when you're in this stage, this process of I'm independent, you know, I'm amateur, I'm still writing, I'm still figuring out my sound, I'm recording, I'm still, you know, trying to put stuff together. Um, every, you know, it, at this stage... Like everything that you're doing, your most recent stuff should be what you're most excited about. You should be just like shedding stuff like this off, like it's a shell and you're metamorphosizing like a butterfly each time you enter into a new song, a new project, a new sound until again, you hit a point where you've developed a style or you're signed, you have an audience, and then with that comes expectations of what it should sound like, what it should be like, what is the aura and ethos and aesthetic of the band and the project that you're known for. But when you're in this stage where you're still developing, you should always be in, a, in the process of developing. And I would hope in the past two years you have developed into something else or at least a more refined version of this. Now, um, from there, I will say stylistically, I thought the track was kind of cool. It sounded almost to, like a, uh, uh, if you took the strokes, but gave them almost like a jangle pop flair, uh, the foundational elements, those drums, the rhythm guitars, the bass and the lead vocals were all fine. 
uh, what was a little underwhelming and, you know, grabbing my attention was the fact that it sounded like you added a lot of bells and whistles. You added a lot of detail, some guitar leads, some synthesizers, you know, those hoo, hoo in the background, which I think could use another take, but they were still in there. And I appreciated that they were there. Um, there was also the solo at the end, but that, you know, that wasn't too bad. I guess what I'm trying to say here is like you added these extra elements, but the song still sounded kind of naked. Like bring these elements up. They sounded kind of shy. Those background vocals were just like for, for the change or the contrast they're obviously trying to create in the song at that point, bring them higher. Those synthesizers, bring them higher. You know, again, you have those foundational elements that you've put together pretty well here everything else you're adding here should be thrown on top. It's all those little extra synth embellishments. That's icing on the cake. Don't hide the icing in the cake. Don't give me a naked cake and then wait for me to cut into the cake to find the icing. The icing should be on top of the cake. Throw those synthesizers on top of the cake. Throw those vocal, those hoo, hoo that you got in there, throw them on top of the cake. Throw those guitar leads that are kind of buried underneath the rhythm guitar on top of of the cake, put those things on top of the cake. Don't throw them in the cake, put them on top of the cake. Um, uh, Structurally, the track sounded fine, though I will say that uh, uh, maybe outside of those guitar solos, if you're gonna drag the song on for the last minute that you do, maybe just add a little something else. Hey, you already kind of had some synthesizers and stuff, maybe bring those back, just to bring another layer to the baseline instrumentation. Um, as you're building it up to kind of just justify the song going on for that length. Um, because, you know, another thing about progressions, especially when you're talking about, you know, pop songs like this, uh, be it indie pop or whatever, um, you know, sometimes in order to keep the tracks interesting and flavorful, which I think you already kind of got a hint of with the solos you were putting on the back end, um, you know, it's really kind of like building onto each section as you're going forward just to make each moment of the song sound different from the previous one, continue, you know, giving the audience that sense of freshness as you're moving through the song. Um, And, uh, you know, again, I I think there were a lot of uh, fine qualities to it. Um, But, you know, I, I will say, I hope at this point in two years, you've outwritten and outmixed this track at least several times over. Maybe this is your favorite song for some reason, and I think it's a fine song. It could obviously, you know, it's a little rough around the edges. It could use some work, but I would hope from here, uh, uh, you know, you've outdone this. And if you haven't, if you if you can look into yourself as an artist and look at this track and genuinely say that you haven't, make sure that you don't make that same mistake for the next two years. Make sure that whatever you're working on right now over the next two years, you're outdoing that. And not outdoing it within the next two years, you're outdoing it within the next month. You know, you're you're working on a track now, it's pretty good or it's great. And you want to be working on a track that makes that, and you want to be working on a track and have done a track that makes that track sound like dog shit in two months. Tops. Especially if you're an amateur who's just doing everything by yourself. I mean, give yourself the time to grow and develop and everything. Don't um, you know, rush through like a bull every single thing that you work on to the point where, you know, you're fucking up all the final, de- the, the finer details and, you know, uh, uh, everything you're putting out sounds like shit. Put in the work, put in the effort, but put yourself on some kind of timeline so that as you're doing it, you're actually feeling and seeing progression. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, you know, those are, those are my thoughts on that. Um, and thank you for submitting, obviously. Hey everyone, thank you for watching this episode of Reviewing Your Music. Make sure again to check out the artists we featured in this video down below in the description box. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. And yeah, that's it. You're the best. Have a good one. Uh, Forever.